morning, everybody. <laughs> uh, pleasure to have you with us in this webinar regarding the uh, onion and garlic crop. The subject is improving your onion and garlic crop nutrition with Haifa, Multicot Agri, Control Release Fertilizers. Uh, with me, uh, we'll transmit the second part of this uh, webinar. Uh, my colleague from Haifa, South Africa, uh, Michael Koch, which is agronomist and uh, specialist in the CRF uh, issue. Content, introduction, Haifa 360 degrees approach, the onion crop, an overview, the garlic crop, also an overview. We will see the nutritional management options that Haifa can uh, providing, granular option, fertigation option, foliar spray, the control release fertilizer, CRF. We will see example of using practically fertigation program by Haifa software NutriNet. And then uh, Michael Koch uh, from South Africa, who Haifa South Africa will continue with the multi Agri concept, multi Agri onion trial results, multi Agri garlic trial results, and conclusions. Haifa 360 degrees approach, farmer minds, which is going to consider the needs and benefits of both crops and growers, precise plants feeding, which is aiming to maximize nutrient use efficiency. And we are bioneering in Haifa and from needs to uh, innovative solutions. All these concepts strategically, we are considering as a sharing knowledge of Haifa. The onion crop in an overview, we can see here the onion producing countries. We can see in uh, Europe, we can see in the dark color, Spain, uh, France, Turkey, in Asia, we can see of course China, Iran, India, uh, and Russia, uh, in Africa, Egypt, Nigeria, and in the North America, Mexico and the US, and in South America, Brazil, Argentina, and Peru, the main onion uh, producing country. And more in details, onion producing uh, countries, we can see here in details, uh, all these uh, countries which are growing uh, onion. Regarding the varieties, onion varieties, there are three main varieties. The white onion, this is a white onion, is the most common type in Mexico, for instance, is the second to the brown onions in flavor and strength. And the, the varieties vary in size, skin characteristics and flavor. The second one is the brown one, the brown onion. This is the most widely used type of onion, also quite popular in Israel. Golden yellow skin, creamy flesh, and usually strongly flavored suitable for cooking. And we have the red onion, sometimes called mistakenly the Spanish onion, purplish red skin, medium to large size, mild to sweet flavor. Uh, under ideal conditions can be stored up to uh, four months, but uh, tend to lose uh, redness when cooked. So there are many three types of onion. Onion growth stages. Uh, there are main five uh, growing stages as far as the onion is concerned, the establishment, vegetative growth, bulb initiation, bulb development, and maturation. Of course, it's varied from climate to climate, from variety, from, from winter season to, to uh, springs to summer season. However, there are main five growing stages, and we are providing uh, fertilization recommendations based on these five growing stages of the onion. Onion growing needs. Onions have a, a shallow, sparsely branched root, and uh, rooting density is decreasing with the soil depth. So it's important to maintain nutrients and soil moisture within the shallow rooting area. It's probably explaining the importance of precise localization of the dripper 
and fertigation, and of course, the advantages of correct, precise placement of the control release uh, fertilizers. Onion growth need, the pH, of course, has its important, optimal range six to seven. Seed bed conditions also has to take into consideration. Uh, optimum soil temperature for germination is between 15 to 25 degrees Celsius degrees. As far as the fertilization, soil analysis used as a guide for diagnosing available nutrient status. A nutrient removal per ton of field is used to calculate the required level of fertilization. And regarding the climate, it's very important to take into consideration that the flowering is depending on a day length and requires low temperatures, lower than 14 to 16 uh, centigrade and low humidity. Regarding the soil analysis, we can see here the guideline, okay, the, for the available nutrient status. We can see here levels of available nutrients in soil on part per million basis. On the left hand side, the soil status, very deficient, deficient, intermediate and sufficient. And we can see for the phosphorus, the left column and the middle for the potassium. And on the right hand side for the zinc, which is a very important micro element for the onion. Regarding the nutrition, the nitrogen, generally speaking, from dry bulb building from it, from transplanting requires a sort of around about 140 up to 170 kilo per hectare of uh, nitrogen. You should take into consideration, please note that too much nitrogen late in the season, too much nitrogen late in the season, I can see here in the season, reduces bulb quality and shortage life due to soft tissue. Therefore, in the late season, a chloride-free, low nitrogen, high K2O products such as potassium nitrate and even chloride-free and nitrogen-free fertilizer like potassium sulfate should take into consideration in the late season of the nitrogen application. Nutrition of the phosphorus. Phosphorus is of course essential for root development and for the energy, energy cycle. You can take an advantage in alkaline area with high bicarbonate contents. You can use an acidic monoammonium phosphate or monopotassium phosphate or even phosphoric acid, high FAP, in order to prevent possible precipitation and to eliminate bicarbonate. So phosphorus also can use for this purpose as well. The potassium, it's of course very important, but has to do a lot regarding the firmness of bulbs. It's important to get a nice size of the onion. However, if we will do it by using high potassium and low nitrogen, we'll get a big but firmness of the bulb, good shelf life of the bulb. And the sulfur, it's a very important secondary plant nutrients and as far as the onion, it is very important for the spicy flavor. The magnesium one, magnesium deficiency is often confused with nitrogen deficiency. Levels in the soil must be adequate for good onion growth. If soil test magnesium levels is low, we are recommending to apply 30 kilo of magnesium per hectare. Magnesium, of course, can be base dressed either by blended in any granular NPK or top dressed and of course can be also fertigated and foliar sprayed. Nutrition with micronutrients. Micronutrients often applied as a regular foliar spray. However, the two most important, main important micro elements which have high demand in the onion crops are the zinc and the boron. So it's very important to incorporate these two important micro elements, zinc and boron, in any fertilization program. Could be incorporated in the bulk blending, could be incorporated, could be fertigated, top dressed, and also foliar sprayed. Very important zinc and boron for this crop. 
Load length removal, kilo per hectare of field. This is the basic. We can see that there is a quite a big difference between the summer season, which has, of course, a much light, much uh, daylight, more vegetative area, much more lethal index, and of course, much higher, uh, required much more nitrogen, P25, K20, comparing to the winter season. We are talking, we're actually referring to almost the entire uh, one unit small per hectare per day in the summer season of, of the nitrogen, P25, K20, comparing to the winter season. Crop nutrients uptake, just to get an idea, we can see here uh, on the left hand side, the cumulative nutrients uptake of the macro and the secondary plant nutrients, the NPK and the calcium, magnesium and the sulfur. And on the right hand side, we can see the cumulative nutrient uptake for the micro nutrients, okay? That just to get an idea regarding the main nutrient consumption curves of the macro, secondary, and micro elements. Regarding leaf analysis, okay, plant part to sample is the tallest leaf blend, and can nutrient levels, we can see the norms for early season or pre-bulbing, so the total nitrogen percentage-wise, for the autophosphate, part per million, and for the soluble, soluble K percentage-wise. And we can see the nutrient level, the deficient in the left, intermediate in the middle, and sufficient on the right hand side. So here we can see the norms for early season pre-bulbing, for the mid-season, for the bulbing uh, uh, stage, and for the late season post-bulbing. That's as far as leaf analysis are concerned. Nutritional disorders in the onion, we can see here nitrogen deficiency, stunted plant with pale green to yellow leaves, the dieback from the tips, the foliage tends to be erect and the bulbs are smaller than normal and mature earlier. Regarding the potassium deficiency in the middle, foliage initially becomes darker green and the tips of the older leaves begin to wilt, especially on the outer surface. Eventually, the leaves droop and take on a setting, like progressing to paper-like appearance and develop chlorosis similar to that caused by nitrogen uh, deficiencies. And the zinc deficiency, which is very important for the onion, we can see on the right-hand side, deficiencies resulted in stunted plant growth with noticeable twisting and faint intravenial chlorosis of the leaves. And onions are very, very sensitive to zinc deficiency. Onions, onions don't like salt. Yield reduction is expected when the EC exceed one to two decisiemens per meter. We can see here that actually the onion is in the group of the most sensitive crops to salinity. We can see the onion actually together with the strawberry. Onion is a very sensitive to salinity, therefore it's responding very nice to a chloride-free uh, fertilization. We can see rate reduction is expected when the EC exceeds one to two decisiemens. At four to five decisiemens, yield declines by 50%. Uh, and here also, we can see that the higher the EC, the electrical conductivity, the smaller is the onion size. You can see on the left side, 1.2 decisiemens, a very nice size. 1.5, the size is uh, decreasing. And we can see with 6.2, actually very, very poor, small onion. So onion is sensitive to salinity. Regarding the garlic crop in the uh, overview, we can see here the main onion producing country in the dark uh, black and green colors in Asia. We can see Russia, China, India, Iran, and Turkey. In Spain, in uh, Europe, Spain and France and, and Italy. In Africa, uh, Egypt and Nigeria. In Northern America, the US and Mexico. And in South America, Brazil, Peru, and Argentina. 
the main garlic growing stages, there are four main growing stages. Of course, they might vary again based on the season, variety, soil types, but there are main five growing stages for the garlic, the establishment, the vegetative growth, the bulb initiation, and bulb filling and maturation. Garlic varieties, there are three main, three main garlic varieties, the soft neck types, which is generally earlier maturing, it's a white one, easier to breed, its main disadvantage, its main, uh, main disadvantage is it's harder to peel, small cloves and small seeds, actually small seed cloves. So this is soft neck types. And here we can see the hard neck types. Okay, this is a four to eight cloves, a range around the central stock. Easier to peel. It's a better winter hardiness, later maturing. And the disadvantage is that uh, this this uh, type, hard neck type, they have, they have a purple pigment in the skin and shorted, shorter storage life. And the last one is the elephant garlic, which has a milder taste, very similar to the garlic taste. However, it's not really a garlic, it's a closer to the leek family. It's a single bulb. It's considered as garlic, but it's closer to the leek uh, family. Growth need, of course, regarding the soil, ideal soil pH should be between 6.5 to 7, and the onion and sandy loam are favorable due to water holding capacity and good drainage. Regarding the climate for the garlic, the garlic thrives in warm climate, and the sweet will growth temperature range is 13 to 24 uh, Celsius uh, centigrade. Nutrient uptake, we can see here also to get an idea, the timing of nutrient application should consider the nutrients uptake pattern throughout the season. Most intensive uptake takes place from the start of the bulb being initiated and during bulb development. And we can see here on the left side, the nutrients consumption care for the macronutrients, macro plant nutrients, NPK, and for the secondary plant nutrients, calcium, sulfur, and magnesium and on the right hand side for the micro elements. Soil analysis guide for the garlic, we can see levels of available nutrient in the soil, part per million. Soil status on the left hand side, very deficient, deficient, intermediate and sufficient. And we can see for the phosphorus on the left, for the potassium in the middle column and zinc on the right hand side. Regarding the nitrogen, garlic has a moderate to high demand for uh, nitrogen. Nitrogen should be applied after plant establishment up until bulbing commences. Uh, nitrogen at the plague application after bulbing, we can see here, after bulbing commences can result in a softer bulb with shorter shelf life. So in some cases, in the case of uh, onion, it's important in the last stage to apply chloride-free and low nitrogen, high K2O uh, ratio fertilizers, such as potassium nitrate, and even nitrogen-free fertilizers, such as NKP, monopotassium phosphate, or potassium sulfate. And foliar nutrition also can be used as a fast correction method. The phosphorus, of course, it's important, as we've mentioned already, it's providing, it's very important for the energy of the plant. It's resulted in a dark green to purple, typical purple uh, color leaves, and the potassium tea burns, a leaf become dark green and erect. And of course, older leaves become yellow and necrotic, symptoms develop in older leaves first. Regarding soil phosphorus recommendation for the garlic, there is the use of bray, one test for acidic soils on the left hand side and use the Olsen test for alkaline soils on the right hand side. And generally speaking, it is recommended to use, to apply, to incorporate soil conditioners which are needed to balance the soil phosphorus level. So we can see here, soil test P level, part per million for the Bray. And here below, 
for the Olsen and the total recommended kilo per hectare of T P25 to apply here below. Regarding soil potassium recommendations for the garlic, you can see here, soil test potassium level part per million and below K2O to apply kilo per hectare, also in the case of the potassium, soil conditioners are recommended in order to balance soil potassium level. Sulfur, sulfur, first of all, it's a, it's a very important secondary plant nutrients, but uh, it's very important for the garlic spicy flavor. So in this case, we can use the uh, ammonium sulfate, high facet, potassium sulfate, multi K enriched with sulfur, multi K sulfur, etc., etc. But sulfur is important for the garlic spicy flavor. And in case of deficiency, it's very similar to nitrogen deficiency. Overall chlorosis and the yearling is much more uniform over the entire plant, including young leaves. Micronutrients, microelements, excuse me, microelements regarding the garlic. They are often applied, of course, as a regular foliar spray. However, both zinc and iron are recommended to be incorporated to the fertilization program. Also here in this case, it could be uh, incorporated to the bulk blending in case of granular NPK in the beginning. It could be used as fertigation or foliar spray. And also we have Haifa Turbo K, granular, granular uh, fertilizer based in potassium nitrate, which is containing also these micronutrients. Nutrient removal per, per one ton of targeted yield, kilo per ton. We can see here nitrogen 4.2, P25, one unit, K2 of 5.6, calcium oxide one to two, and magnesium oxide one per one kilo of targeted yield. Uh, nutrients are important. Uh, the leaf at initial bulbing, we can see leaf analysis in the garlic percentage wise. As far as macro and secondary plant nutrients for the NPK calcium, magnesium, and sulfur, we can see here percent based on percentage. And for the micronutrients, we can see here below for the manganese, iron, zinc, copper, boron, and olive. Garlic is also sensitive to salinity, not as the onion, but also when salinity exceeds 3.9 decisimes per meter threshold, the yield and quality processing attributes are significantly uh, reduced. So in order to get maximum yield, it is essential to keep low soil salinity and to consider to apply chloride-free fertilizers and also the CRF is very important that can be used as a tool to combat salinity. Regarding nutrition management of Haifa, we are in Haifa combining nutrient, nutritional uh, solution. The nutritional program may include a combination of products and application methods, all together, combined, or each one of them. So before sowing at a transplant stage, we have our soil application, a granular NPK fertilizer where we can use our Haifa Turbo K, which is a granular NPK chloride free based on potassium nitrate. Or of course we can use the, the, our control release fertilizer, multi-coat agri. And throughout the season, of course, we can fertigate by nutrition our wide range of soluble chloride free fertilizers and as far as foliar nutrition, we can apply our, our wide range of foliar spray products for, through the pivot line, sprayer, and or by air play. Let's see a few examples. Base dressing with Haifa Turbo K. This is a granular, chloride-free granular NPK based on potassium nitrate combined with a with nutrition. So we can see here always the five main growing stages of the 
uh, of the onion, establishment, vegetative growth, bulb initiation, bulb development and maturation. And we can see it's just an example. We are base dressing with turbo K triple 15, and then we are fertigating with our broad spectrum of chloride free fertilizers, polyfeed, magnesium, magnesium nitrate, hyphacal. Uh, and this example, the total nutrient supplied kilo per hectare, providing 300 nitrogen, 157 units of P25, K2O kilo, uh, 459 K2O. 44 units per hectare of MGO and 72 units of hectare of calcium oxide. And just nutrition with Haifa wide range of chloride free straight fertilizers. We can see here just nutrition and we can see we are using our straight multi K, potassium united, Haifa map, monomonium phosphate, magnesium, Haifa mag, magnesium united, Haifa cal. And this example, this just nutrition program is, is supplying, is supplying, we can see below the nitrogen per hectare, P25, K2O kilo per hectare, magnesium hectare, oxide kilo per hectare, and calcium oxide kilo per hectare. The ultimate way to provide, to share knowledge is uh, our software, namely NutriNet. This is a plant nutrition expert system updated database on Haifa crops and solution, generating of a nutrition program step by step. It's incorporating local weather data, soil analysis, water quality for irrigation and much more. And the service is free of charge. And you can see here the address nutrinet.haifa-group.com. Here we can see a practical recommendations for Mexico for the onion. This is of course a quantitative uh, fertigation. We have the two options, quantitative and proportional. Of course, it's a, for a soil growing onion, it's quantitative. So we can put all the details of Mexico, including the site, the place, the precise place of the farm in Mexico and the nutrient requirement for the entire crop cycle is, uh, is giving this nutrient requirement for the entire crop cycle. Here you can see just an example for the first stage. It's providing the nutrients requirement per each growing stage, as we can see here for the first 30 days. And also the nutrient is recognizing the fertilizers which are existing in this specific example, a case in Mexico, and it's recommending multi-NPK, which is the main potassium nitrate in Mexico, Haifa mag, magnesium nitrate, ammonium sulfate, Haifa micro combi, Haifa micro uh, copper. And also, since it's on a quantitative basis, it is recommending in each fertilizer the quantity to be applied per hectare per day, as we can see here below. For instance, Haifa mag, 1.9 kilo per hectare per day of Haifa mag in the first stage. So this is a practical example using this excellent platform in Mexico. And the same for the, for the garlic, it's the same issue, quantitative uh, approach, a nutrient requirement for the entire crop cycle for garlic in Mexico. And here we can see below and nutrient requirement per each growing stage. This is just an example for the first 60 days and recommended fertilizers. Also in this case, the Nutrinet is recognized as the existing fertilizers in Mexico. And in this case, it's recommending multi-NPK, Haifa mag, Haifa ammonium sulfate, Haifa cal GG, calcium nitrate, and Haifa map monoammonium phosphate, and the quantity to be applied kilo per hectare per day below each recommended fertilizer we can see here below. Foliar nutrition, also working very nice in the onion. We can see here a filtrate, a filtrate with our exclusively fertilizer for foliar spray, namely Haifa Bonus K. This, this, uh, this is a filtrate from Guanajuato State in Mexico with Haifa Bonus. The Bonus is the brand for all the entire basket of Haifa uh, foliar uh, fertilizers. And we can see here, the results, actually very nice results by 
best treatment being achieved by Haifa bonus 2% concentration with very nice advantages. Two advantages, first of all, large proportion of large size, which is a very important parameter for export, and also quite a nice a, a percentage of extra large, which this is a very favorable size for the Mexican consumer and also for the restaurants sector. So an overall very nice size and also the highest yield, 72 tons per hectare. So also foliar spray doing the job. We can see here a foliar nutrition program for the garlic. Usually it's mixing two third polyfeed, which is our uh, soluble NPK chlorate free and rich with micronutrients brand polyfeed combining with Haifa magnesium nitrate. And we can see that in the initial stage of the garlic, we are recommending a low concentration because the field is very young. And we can see here on the, on the right side, the total quantity per hectare of each product and the total quantity uh, per hectare. So we are starting with a high P starter formula, 1243-12. And then we are moving in the veg vegetative stage. We increase gradually concentration because the crop is growing. The field is, has more vegetative area. And here we change to the vegetative formula, triple 19, and also mixing with magnesium nitrate. And we can see the quantity here of the polyfeed per hectare and the Mahaifa mag per hectare and the total quantity to add to the tank mix. And the filling stage also increasing gradually the concentration with a high K2 ratio, what we called filling, the finisher, the finisher formula, finishing formula 10, 10, 43. And of course here is the high concentration is already 2% and the total quantity in the tank mix is between five to six kilo, mixing 3.5 to four kilo polyfeed with one and a half to two kilo Haifa mug. Okay, this is introductory stage. And now Michael Koch uh, from Haifa South Africa will continue. Please, Michael. Thank you, Adeg. Uh, let me just share and see if we can get that in. Okay, are you seeing my screen there? Yes. Okay. All right, well, uh, thank you, Adeg, well done. Um, I want to talk about the multicode agri concept first because controlled release fertilizer is a very special, very new concept that we should consider. Um, and then I'm just trying to find my moving here. Excuse me. Okay. Um, so the controlled release fertilizer involves a, a water soluble granule that is coated with a polymer coating. And when you enlarge the, the coating under electron microscope, you can see the pores through which diffusion takes place. That is a semi-permeable layer that we put around a water-soluble granule to release the nutrients over a prescribed time. So this is what it looks like in effect. We have a nutrient core. The inner part is a soluble fertilizer with a polymer coating surrounding it, uh, encapsulating it. And these, these products we call multi-coat and basically mostly used in soilless media um, and then what we have is a range called uh, where yeah, these granules contain one to 10 nutrients. It can be anything from just urea or it can be an NPK uh, nutrient with all the micronutrients included. Um, we then have a range which we, which we blend, uh, which is called multicoat agri, where we take the multicoats and we then include it in uh, different formulations to give us uncoated nutrients and controlled nutrients which give us the, the nutrient requirement that we need for each crop. So if we look at the, the, how the multi works, when you apply it to the soil, it absorbs moisture. And we talk about stage one, which is the lag phase. This takes seven to 10 days generally. And uh, once, once it's started dissolving, it goes to stage two, which is a linear release phase where the water penetrates and continues penetrating and dissolving the nutrients inside. And then we have the diffusion starting to happen where the nutrients, the salt concentration inside, which is higher, starts moving to the outside of the, of the permeable layer so that we can get the release. Um, and then we have this, the sta stage three, which is the decay phase, where basically all the nutrients are now dissolved inside. 
So now it can no longer increase in concentration inside. So we're generally getting a, uh, a reduction in concentration as the salts uh, leave the granule and go into the soil and are taken up by the roots. Um, so if we look at it on, on a graph, you can basically see we, have, we apply the fertilizer to the soil. We have the lag phase, which is almost no release. And then we have a linear release rate for the, for the stage two. And, and this is the period where we, if we say it is a two month or four month or eight month, this is the period that we are actually referring to. And then we go into the decay phase where it gradually just reduces until there's no more uh, nutrient inside the granule. And you end up with an empty polymer shell, which then degrades and becomes uh, a carbon over a long time. Um, the release strategy or the technology, basically we calibrated at 21 degrees soil temperature. And what the, the diffusion is, is, was determined by Fick's law. Fick's second law was working out what are the factors that affect this. And uh, he found that temperature was the only relevant factor that we should take into consideration. The higher the temperature, the faster the release rate, the shorter the longevity. So when we say it is a two month or four month, if it is warmer, it will release faster and then you won't get two months or four months, you'll get a month or two months, depending on the temperature. The cooler it is, the slower the release and the longer the longevity. So under six degrees, there's no release so from six degrees on upwards. It's like a rev counter as, it, as, it, as the temperature increases, so does the speed of release. Um, and if you think about a plant, a plant also grows, the warmer it is, the faster it grows generally, the cooler it is, the slower it grows. So coming back to multi-code agri, we spoke about these are custom blended formulas uh, designed for, for specific crop use, and we will go into more detail. Uh, where we're basically combining different multi coat products with conventional granular fertilizers to make this nutrient. And you can see here we use coat N, which is a coated urea, for instance. We use um, multi, multi coat uh, NP, like an MAP or potassium nitrate, and we blend these to get our NP and K ratio to, according to the crop requirement. And then we also put a percentage of uncoated material, which gives you, which overcomes the lag phase in the, in the initial part. So with, the, with a formula like this, where, which is all coated, losses that you would normally have due to potassium or phosphate fixation or nitrogen volatilization or leaching, you're basically avoiding all of these issues and these losses with a multi coat agri formula, which you can see here. So basically, uh, we saw that crop demand, so the, the green line here is the crop demand, and you can see the, um, and this can be N, P, and K, and we formulate the multi-coat on the orange line, and we're basically trying to release just the right amount of nutrients just in time for the plant to take up. And we're moving away from conventional fertilizer where a huge base dressing was, was applied to the fertilizer before planting, and then with side dressings, time, trying to time the, the top up side dressings for each growth stage. If you are in a situation like this where we've been shown an extreme case where you are late with your application, the plant has gone into a deficiency and you have lost yield as a result or quality. And this you cannot make up. So what the controlled release is trying to do is trying to smooth out these curves and take that zigzag or the sawtooth effect out. Um, Multicoat should always be applied in the root zone. And you can see that as long as the, granule, the fertilizer is in the granule, it has no negative effect on the soil. There's no EC. There's no burning of the roots, uh, and you can see they get the, the fine air roots get in there, um, and you get constant moisture release. There you can see how the trichoderma and the soil microbes are actually making their mesh and their fungi are growing in around the multi coat, so increasing the uptake of the nutrient that you've applied. So basically, the benefits that we have with multi coat is your nutrition is matching your plant need. It saves you labor and time because you're doing a single application at planting, and we're improving the nutrient use efficiency of all the, of all the nutrients, and we are therefore applying 30 to 50% less nutrients to do the same job. This makes it also more environmentally friendly. Not only are you using less, uh, but you're also not having any leaching or losses to the soil, uh, to, to the environment. So you, 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 we, we have a softer effect there, a more sustainable effect. And then lastly, one of the big factors is it's applied independently of irrigation. So where hypha is a water-soluble 
focus, very, very strong water soluble focus that's supplied through the irrigation. We are now saying that we can apply the multi coat and you do not need to irrigate unless you need moisture. You do not need to irrigate just to fertilize. So now we're going to share some trial results. Um, we, I'm going to focus, I'm not going to focus too much on them uh, or too, uh, too long on each slide. The idea is to show you that we have done a lot of work on different crops and that there's no single result or single fertilizer option for it. As I did show you, there are lots of different options how we can handle it. So we're going to look at uh, trials in onion uh, in Israel, Australia, and South Africa, and also uh, combined uh, CRF, multi coat combined with nutrition from Mexico. Um, so if we look at a trial that was done many years ago in Israel, uh, the farmer's practice was to apply only urea. The potassium in the soils are quite high, so they don't need a lot of potassium. Uh, but 11 applications were made using uh, the, uh, a crop tester. So this was applied from the air, so quite expensive to apply. We did three multi applications, one at 50% of, of the nitrogen, one at 75%, and one at 100% to do the comparison. Um, we then, uh, if we look at the yield results, the farmer's practice gave us 86 tons per hectare. Uh, no fertilizer obviously gave us a very low yield. And all three of the multi applications were better than the farmer's practice, um, sig significantly better than the farmer's practice. If we look at the cost in this case, uh, the multi uh, although the fertilizer on the farmer's practice was relatively cheap, its application was very expensive. Uh, the multi is not a cheap product, but it's a very good product. So here you can see the full 100% was more expensive than the farmer practice on, on fertilizer cost. But if you look at in terms of what the application cost, we were actually cheaper on all three of these applications. Uh, and if one look, converts that to, to the yield benefit, you can see we've got a better nutrient use efficiency and we've got a better yield and more cost effective with the farmer than the farmer's practice. So that was one of the trials. Um, we've been through that. And in, in Australia, they did a spring onion application and, I, and I'll show you these pictures because it's interesting just to see how they've applied. You can see they've applied it sort of on the lines of the planting lines, and uh, they came through afterwards with a, with a tool to scratch it into the topsoil. They did not have a, a, a equipment on the, on the applicator. Um, but what's interesting here, if one looks at it again, the, the control was, gave 140 uh, decks per field, and the multi was 162. Um, so 22 more decks there, and you can see here what a deck is, it's 10 bunches. Um, and if we look at per hectare, the income per hectare uh, on, the, on the control was $595, sorry, per hectare, 75,000 versus 87,000 on the multi dollars per hectare, which is basically 15.7% higher yield uh, and a turnover on a, on a hectare. Comparatively, if we look at some of the just some of the visual pictures, because it's also interesting to see, you can see that the plants there, you can see the color difference after eight weeks. After 11 weeks, you can see a much stronger, bigger plant, and after 13 weeks, we're sitting with uh, with a full plant and uh, better yield at the end of the day. Um, again, so we've got higher color uniformity, higher bunch weight, with 68% higher bunch weight, higher returns, less labor and less harm caused by machinery passing over the field each week. Um, and, and that also saves you a lot of time. Um, a program from South Africa, um, you, we do the pre-plant, um, the soil amelioration or the soil conditioners <clears throat> that I did also mentioned. Uh, we look at the soil analysis and one does the corrections. At planting, we apply a single dose of multi agri uh, three unions, so it's a three month release and union is just a name that we gave it. Uh, and we're applying that all at planting in, in, into the soil at five centimeters deep and five centimeters to each side of the plant row is the ideal. But uh, with this applicator on the, on the right here, we have, nine we have nine beds and generally there are, are nine uh, uh, times that we are applying the fertilizer through. And you can see uh, it's, we've, we're covering the full bed there. Uh, and then after planting, 
In this case, we are applying two applications of Hyper Turbo K um, as, as, as basically as a starter, because this, this formula, we have no, no starter in it. It's all 100% coated material. And the starter or the lag period, we are using Turbo K to, to cover that period. And this we can. This is this allows us, gives us the flexibility to play with the weather. If it's very cold and the plants take a long time before they start, they stand up, as they say, then we can we can hold back on this fertilizer until the plants are ready to accept it. And here we can see we did an average of three farms that we we averaged three farms yields that were doing the same uh, trial that year, and we sat here with it eight tons per hectare more. Uh, which results in a 10.5% yield increase uh, on, this, on, on those farms. Uh, if we, we also graded the, the, the yield or, or the, the results, and you can see we have 9% uh, less small uh, onions, and the, we, we have more small, medium, and more medium large, which is where the economy of the scale lies. This is, the, this is what we want to market, not these small ones. So we basically, uh, um, if one looks at the, uh, we also did a storage evaluation, and this is something that uh, over many years we've seen the same thing, the same trend. The multi-coat onions are store, uh, have a longer storage life. They tend to rot slower than, they, they will also get some disease. Uh, you can see here that there is still some incidence of these disease, uh, but after storage, we ended up with 43% less uh, incidence of disease compared to the control, um, the normal. So what's happening is the, the multi-coat onions go into the store and they will be packed last out of all the other onions that have gone in, um, which gives the farmer the, 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 the opportunity to extend his packing life, shelf life before he has to sell it. So we're sitting with higher yields, 10%, we're sitting with 9% more marketable yield, and we're sitting with a better quality um, and shelf life, uh, which all combine to give you a, a significantly greater profit to the grower. Uh, and to top it all, we're getting better nutrient use efficiency because we're using less nutrients per hectare. This is an example from, from Mexico with multi-coat agri with, with nutrigation. And you can see here the farmer's application with, and there was a normal base dressing a very small base dressing with quite a high um, fertigation or nutrigation as we call it. Uh, and we came in with a high multi-coat agri solution with a bigger base dressing. You can see we're applying more nitrogen, phosphate uh, and potassium there and a smaller nutrigation component. So we're still, we're combining both. We're still getting the benefits of both, but from 300 units of nitrogen down to 211 units of nitrogen is basically a 30% reduction. Uh, and we were still able to get a significant, significant yield increase on this trial. Um, so yeah, basically an example of how we would do it, um, apply the multi-coat agri, and it can be any formula which is based on local conditions. And we can either go with uh, the polyfeeds or as Deb showed us earlier, and we will, we will apply the nutrients per hectare based on the area and the demand of the crop. So on garlic, if we can do some trial results there, uh, we basically, some trials from Mexico, from Israel, two trials from Israel, two different trials, and a third trial from Israel, which we've just done this year, um, which is quite, a, quite an interesting one. So based on, on the Mexican results, uh, it was a multi coat agri base dressing with nutrigation versus a straight nutrigation program. Uh, and here you can see we are sitting with the cost per hectare was fairly similar, but we, sat, we, we ended up with a higher yield um, with the multi-coat in the program. But what was more significant was we ended up with 79% more export quality, which is the bigger sizes, which is what the, the grower is looking for. So at the end of the day, your net income per hectare is significantly higher. Um, here's just some pictures. All these trials are done by HIFA agronomists around the world. And it usually takes quite a lot of coordination to actually do these trials and to do the harvesting properly and to manage it. And here you can see some multi-coat granules that are now empty uh, that have been taken from the soil uh, when they were pulling the onions uh, or garlic, whichever it was. Yeah. 
And here you can see some more pictures. So all of this has to be done by hand. It's been graded and been sorted um, over many years. The trial, one, of the, one of the trials from Israel was an open field heavy soil uh, with no irrigation, so it's rain fed. And here we can see we had, uh, we had four different trials of, of long, with testing the longevity with the, just the nitrogen coated. And we had one practice, the fifth one, was a multi-coat where both the nitrogen and the potassium are, are coated uh, at 70%. So on the first one here, the highest yield and the highest export or A-grade yield was the two-month release nitrogen 50% coat, 57% of the nitrogen of the farmer's practice. So you can see all of these are significantly, well, this one was significantly better, and these others are statistically, uh, on average, the same as the farmer's practice. So all, all five of these trials with the, with the multi coat resulted in better yields than the farmer practice. <clears throat> and if I just compare the, the main one, which was the 57% two month coated uh, nitrogen, um, we can see we, we had a single application. Of, of at planting, we had 43% less nitrogen applied. We had 7% higher yield, um, which resulted in 11% higher income per hectare. So at the end of the day, another successful trial that was carried out showing that nutrient use efficiency is better, uh, and we're talking about 200% better here if one does the calculation. Another trial that was done uh, comparing multi coat agri and the sprinklers and a liquid fertilizer or nutrigation and a drip irrigation. And you can see here we're sitting with 22% higher yield uh, on this trial. Um, another trial was done using the suction lysimeters to extract the soil moisture from the root zone. And you can see here the sprinkler, the multi coat under the sprinkler with a single application. And you can see where our ECs were running. Uh, started off at, a, at about three and then continued at two for the whole season. So this was a controlled and gradual release all the way through the season, compared to the nutrigation where you ended up with an EC of almost seven and it stayed quite high for most of the season and only at the end of the season did it reach down to two. Now, um, the nitrate, nitrate concentration had followed the same pattern. So you can see they were pushing the nitrogen, uh, trying to push the fertigation Whereas with a controlled release, you're getting a gradual release every single day. It's a controlled process, and you're getting a constant availability of your nutrient uh, all the way through. Um, if we consider what the what we've just learned from Oded earlier, uh, your garlic has a salinity threshold of 3.9, uh, and here you can see the line. So here we're sitting well over that 3.9 threshold. So this is causing yield uh, reduction all the way through. And only here is the plant getting becoming comfortable. Where with the multi coat, we're getting an initial um, problem, but uh, it stayed stayed constant below that. So uh, if we look, consider onion with an onion multi coat release, one can consider, and that's why we do 100% coating because we want to make sure that our controlled release stays the EC and the root zone stays below two all the way through the season. Um, so that's yeah. So that's my the trial results. If I can just add some conclusions, it is very important that multi coat be placed in the soil and in your active root zone. So we spoke about the shallow roots that that onion and garlic really have, and we want that multi coat to be shallow. Um, we, if we look at what Hypha can offer, we have all the water soluble fertilizers, straights, and polyfeeds that are mixes that can do provide nutrigation options. We have products for foliar nutrition. We also have the Turbo K for soil application and multi-K prills, for instance, that we can do as a soil application. And then the, what we've just spent time on now is the controlled release nutrition. And remember, controlled release nutrition is different to slow release, so we must keep that in mind. And then HIFA have also recently launched a new range of biostimulants. So we can offer you all the biostimulants, which are stress relieving, uh, soil enhancing or plant enhancing biostimulants uh, in our range of products. So we have a lot of solutions, a lot of products for solutions uh, which you can use. Um, so with that, we, ha we have a range of fertilizers. We have various methods for that suit your different methods of application. 
We have high quality products with low sodium and chloride, which is what uh, is important to consider. We have a global experience and presence, and you can contact your local HIFA supplier and ask for the right solution for you. If there's no single solution. Uh, the right solution will, de will be determined on your farm, on your area, and with the crop that you're planting. Uh, so there you are. Thank you very much. If there are any questions, please let us know. Thank you, Oded. Thank you, Michael. It was very interesting. Um, we have a few questions. Oded, for you. To yes. Yes. This question. Uh, yes, yes, we can hear you. Uh, if this uh, information will be published and where we can find more information about garlic and onion. Okay, this webinar is uh, recorded. You will find it in our uh, different uh, in our website. It will be also published in the YouTube. Uh, so this information will be available in both English, of course, and as from next week also uh, in Spanish. We will uh, we'll find it in our website. Uh, thank you, Michael. For you, it's um, uh, how can uh, the control is fertilizer, the CRF can help the salinity. Uh, yeah, that, uh, that is ba basically with the control release, as long as the fertilizer is inside the granule, inside the capsule, it has no effect on the soil around it, so the EC will stay constant. And as it is releasing, if it is releasing in time for the plant to take it up, then you have a basic, you're not, you're not increasing the EC in your root zone. So that is how you would control the salinity. And it's just the right nutrients. There are no, no chlorides, no, no um, sodiums in the product. <clears throat> Another question regarding uh, control list fertilizers. The, you said that there is a better, higher yield, but uh, regarding quality, what's the, what's about? Well, quality? Yeah, we, we're getting higher yield, not by pushing too high nitrogen, as I did also mentioned, too high nitrogen can cause uh, quality issues. So we're pushing a constant availability of, of all the nutrients in a balanced ratio according to the plant demand. And that means that the plant's not getting an excess of any nutrients. So the growth is, is uniform and constant throughout the season. Okay, thank you. And for Oded, uh, what is the problem with the nitrogen that if I get a large bulb with the... Uh, that's some uh, sort of a common mistake that the uh, onion growers, they want to get a big size and they do it by nitrogen. So by just uh, inflating the size of the onion by nitrogen, you get a very big, a big size, but completely soft, low quality onion. Uh, so don't be mistaken. If you want to get a good size, but combining with har hardness and good shelf life of the onion, try to always to do it by a low nitrogen and high uh, potassium products like potassium, like potassium nitrate, uh, high NK2O ratio which will provide for each nitrogen at least three four times more potassium so by that you will get a good size but you will get a real hardness and a good quality on it so don't let the, the nitrogen to to miss to confuse you you will get a big size but a very low quality soft onion by just uh, increasing the size by nitrogen only Um, okay, I think we have uh, finished our time. So thank you again, uh, Oded and uh, Michael. And uh, we'll, I will, uh, will happy okay. to see you again on the next webinar. And you can find all the information on our website and the YouTube uh, channel. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Michael. Thank you all. Thank you, Joshua. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.